Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Glenn and today I will show you how I painted the civilians from the board game Oswan into the deep wood. I will show you step by step how I went from these unpainted miniatures to these painted miniatures. Let's dive right into it. First things first, I made sure to remove all the mode lines on the models. These can be removed by scraping with a hobby knife or by file. These mode lines can be found all the way around the models from the bottom to the top. I recommend checking for mode lines again after you have primed the models. Finding them during the painting process after the speed paints have been applied and dried can be a headache. If you need to remove one of these mode lines, you might need to repaint the whole area with primer and then apply the specific speed paint to the certain area again. Which means if you find one on the model shirt, you might need to repaint the whole shirt to get a nice result. It's hard to repair a small area with speed paints because of the way it dries and behaves. Anyway, I primed the civilians with Care's black primer. Next I used an airbrush to make a cinephile light effect by applying a white color from above. By applying the primer in this manner, the speed paint will create the shadows due to the cinephile light effect. This can also be applied by using a can of white primer. Either way, a cinephil light effect and a white base is required. When I began painting the Ozone models, I bought the starter set from Army Painter. I think it's a great starter set and I have tested it out on some of the models as I went on painting the different encounters. Throughout this tutorial, I will primarily use speed paints from the starter set. The colors on a white surface can be vibrant, so I experimented with mixing the speed paints to achieve slightly different tones of colors. Before I painted the civilians, I planned the paint scheme. I made some fast and tidy sketches just to have an idea of where to add the paints. I started with a mix of 6 parts height velour purple and 8 parts blood red. This I apply to different clothes on the models. When working with speed paints, I use a cheap brush. I made the models in pairs, so everyone has a twin. For the next mix, I use 4 parts orc skin, 12 parts sealot yellow, and three parts hardened leather. Same as the last step, I applied this to different clothes on the models. The third mix consists of 8 parts hardened leather and 3 parts pallet bone. The fourth mix consists of two parts sealot yellow and six parts pallet bone. This is applied to some of the hoods. I applied two coats of this mix. The fifth mix consists of 6 parts highlight blue and 9 parts pellet bone. This is just pure fire giant orange. 
I applied this to some of the hoods. The sixth mix is with eight parts gray blood gray and four parts hardened leather. This is applied to the boots on all the models. On the male civilians, I also added to the pounds on their side. When the first layer on the boots is dry, I apply a second coat. I also added a second coat on the pounds with pure hardened leather. Next I apply black to all the belts on the civilians. Now I mix three parts hardened leather and eight parts pellet bone. This is applied to the orange hoods. I think they turned out a bit too vibrant, so I toned it down with this mix. I gave the small patches on the female tunics the same color as their trousers. Now let's move on to the weapons. I started applying Terret Brown to all the weapons as a base coat on both male and female civilians. Next I apply Beastie Brown to all the weapons. I apply this by painting lines along the shafts to give them a more organic look like wood veins. I switched to a finer brush for details like this and also for the highlights later on. I apply a second layer of wood veins along the shafts with the mix of beastie brown and bone white. Now onto the metal parts of the weapons. I would like them to appear rusty. I start with Beastie Brown, applying it in a random pattern on all the metal parts, on all the civilians. Next I do the same but with Doombull Brown. For this step I use chainmail silver. This is applied on the edges, on the axes and hammers.
I follow up with a bit of Agrax Earthshade on the Chainmail Silver to dull it down a bit. After the wash is dry, apply highlights with steel on the axes and hammers, focusing on the edges. I paint scratches at the edges and in random places. Let's proceed to the skin. I start applying Doombolt Brown to the darkest area, the throat of all the civilians. If you have seen my other videos, I imagine the light source coming directly from above. For the next skin tone, I use Buckman's Glow. This is applied to the face. I also apply Doombolt Brown to the hands. I apply Buckman's Glow to the hands, focusing on the areas exposed to the light source, such as the top of the hands. Next I apply Ulfon Grey to the eye sockets. Don't worry if you overdo it and it looks like a mess. We'll cover this up later. It can be a bit tricky to paint eyes, but I find this easier to do. What I do is paint a dark colored line in the center to create the pupil. Make sure to align the pupils either in the center or to one of the sides. The eyes may look a bit crazy, Let's solve that right away. I use Buckman's Glow to cover up the Ulfan Grey. I carefully narrow down the eye sockets to make it more realistic. There are a lot of eyes to paint, so this is a great way to get them done. When painting the eyes, use a small brush with a fine and pointy tip. I continue on the skin by applying Cadian Flesh Tone. I applied this to the face where I think the light source would light up the face. This is also applied to the hands. Next I use Kisle Flesh, again I focus on the exposed parts of the face, but more on the edges. And like the last step, remember the hands. The last skin tone is Pale Flesh. This is the last highlight. It's just a little that is applied, but enough to make a difference. I focus on areas like the forehead, eyebrows, nose, the cheekbones, and the chin. And this is also the last highlight on the hands. For the hair on the female civilians has a few options. For this one, I use Jared Brown as the base color. 
Next, I apply a layer of tau light ochre on the edges of the hair. And for the final highlight, I apply a mix of tau light ochre and bone white on the very edges of the hair. For this one, I use black as the base color and apply a mix of black and white onto the edges of the hair. And for the last highlight, add more white into the mix and apply that to the very edges of the hair. Now I move on to highlighting all the clothes. I start with Tau Light Ochre to highlight all the orange clothes. I focus on the most exposed and raised areas on the models and also the edges. This applies to all the next steps regarding highlighting. The next highlight color is light sea blue, which I apply to all the blue clothes. For the yellow hoods, I use a mix of Uriel yellow and Ulfron gray. For the red clothes, I use Buckman's glow. And for the green clothes, I use a mix of Uriel yellow and Caliban green. As for the boots on all the civilians, I use Beastie Brown.
After applying the beastie brown highlights on the boots, I added a coat of Agrax Earthshade to darken them and achieve a smoother transition between the brown colors. I apply medium gunship grey to the belts on all the civilians. Next I apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade to all the belts. After the wash is dry, I apply medium gunship grey again for highlights. I go around the edges and paint some random scratches on the belts. I apply steel on the small metal parts on the belts. For those details, I applied a bit of Agrax Earthshade. And for the last highlight, I added a bit of steel on the edges. For the small cords or strings on the tunics, I used Cherrod Brown as a base coat. Next, I added a layer of Beastie Brown and for the last highlight, I use a mix of beastie brown and bone white. I paint the small cords on the small pads with beastie brown. The models are done for now, and I will now move on to painting the bases. I begin by applying speed paints and blending them directly on the base. My aim is to create strong color contrast and a random pattern. While the hyaloid blue might seem unusual at first, when mixed with orc green, it turns into deep green tones. I also aim to vary the bases slightly to avoid having them all appear identical. For the next 7 minutes or so, I'll be painting bases with speed paint, just to show some examples. Note I add Gravelord Grey to the palette just to see how it turned out, and that color is also great for a more dull appearance. Feel free to skip it, the next step will be highlighting the bases. You could also remain right here and follow along while enjoying the fantastic music by Carl Casey.
I move on to highlighting the bases after the speed paint is completely dry. In general, I'll be using a combination of Caliban Green, Uriel Yellow, Bone White and Beastie Brown for the roots. These paints don't necessarily need to be mixed together, simply apply them as you see fit. I also use Warlord Purple, Sirius Purple and Light Sea Blue for minor details. I paint small dots on the base as if it was fungus or mushrooms. My approach is to experiment by mixing the paints before applying them, creating a random and natural looking environment. Or at least as natural it can be in the depths of the deep wood. When highlighting the bases, always add the lightest layer on top. Feel free to explore different options and see what suits your style. For the next 3 minutes or so, I'll be painting the highlights on the bases to show some examples. Now we are almost done. I go the two last laps around the base rim with a black color. And for the last step, I gave the models a coat of matte varnish. And with that, let's have a look at the models. 
And here we have the civilians, ready to get slaughtered in the depths of the deep wood. They look a bit vibrant, but I think it works fine. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned something new. If you found this content interesting, you can support me by sharing the video, leaving a like and comment below. Let me know what you think about this content, maybe what you would like me to improve and I will definitely look into it. You can also check my other content with similar style for more tutorials and painting tips. I hope I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Thank you.